I recently had a, another surveyor tell me that his field party chief told him he was not a metallurgist, which means he couldn't tell if it was aluminum or brass. Well, not a metallurgist, but you're not a surveyor either. Today's topic is monument descriptions. Professional land surveyor has a very unique responsibility under the authority of a license, and that is the establishment of property lines and property corners. These lines in and of themselves are invisible. The public relies on the professional land surveyor to set monuments so that they are physically marked. These monuments are absolutely paramount to civil harmony. The courts recognize these monuments. In describing a monument or the monument, the pedigree is important. If that monument holds such pedigree and is held in such high esteem by the law and by the courts, then it's intrinsic upon the land surveyor to describe these monuments well. In order to determine the pedigree of a monument, the description is absolutely important. State law recognizes this. Business and Professions Code Section 8764A says that monuments will be described as to their kind, size, and location, and giving other data relating thereto. For example, let's talk about kind. If you say found spike, is that spike a railroad spike? Is it a mag spike, a boat spike, a gear spike, or gin spike? Or is it actually a dura nail? This is important in describing monuments. So if, if you don't describe the kind of monument, technically you're out of compliance with the law. Now the next thing says the size. Okay, is it a two inch inside diameter pipe? Is it a two inch outside diameter pipe? Is it a three quarter inch iron pipe inside diameter? When we talk about this, the kind also, let's talk about washers. Is it a brass washer? Is it a steel washer? Or is it an aluminum washer? This is what the law requires. In addition to state law, we have statewide guides provided by the county surveyors under the SEAC organization. What do they find important in describing a monument? It says that the monument shall be described as to the type, material, height relative to the ground surface, stamping and tagging. This is very consistent with the state law. Next, we look at the nationally adopted standards by NSPS, ALTA. Referring to Section 5A, it says that the location, size, character, and type of any monuments found, or refer to the Caltrans Manual, which says monument type and size, type of marker, brass disc, plastic cap. These laws, whether they're state, national, adopted guidelines, are very consistent. They're consistent within each jurisdiction. Therefore, this would be the standard because it's written and it's adopted. So when we look at these guidelines and we look at the state law, we find that monument descriptions we commonly see like found mon, found SPK, found SSM, these monument descriptions do not comport with the standards established or the state law and therefore they're unacceptable. Now, when we say SSM, when you see that, that's commonly referred to as standard survey monument. If anything, monuments are not standard. However, some jurisdictions do have standards, but they have multiple standards. Each standard has a number assigned to it typically and a year. So you can have the same standard different years. So when you say found SSM, it's very inconsistent. When you say SPK, why are we abbreviating and leaving out an I and an E? This is unacceptable. It's always been unacceptable and we have to do better as a community. We need to know if that is a railroad spike. We need to know if that is a boat spike. We need to know if that is a cut spike. There's no less than six different types of spikes. We typically have three different types of washers, brass, aluminum, and steel. These are things that we need to describe in all of our descriptions. Looking at the standard monuments, you'll see here that I have multiple standards. And looking at the, at the standards, you'll see we have a standard 1405, a standard 1406, we have a standard 205. These are, two of them are in one ju the same jurisdiction. The third one is in a third jurisdiction. And in, in looking at that, 205, 206, 207 are all standards. So each one of those, this particular one, calls for a spike. In looking at the spike, 
It doesn't tell you what type of spike to set. This is why standard survey monument is insufficient. In, in preparing this, this program, I uh, went through and I just actually was walking by and I had uh, one of my staff members, I said, just hand me a corner record that's sitting right there in your pile of research. It was in LA County, so I knew odds were decent that I would find what, what we see here. What I have, filed corner record, found S and W. It's interesting that they spell out the word found and then they put S ampersand W. Presumably this is spike and washer. On the same corner record, I have found SPK. Over here, I have a found S and W. And down here again, I have a found S and W. Now that's a spike and washer. It doesn't tell me what kind of spike, doesn't tell me what kind of washer, doesn't give me a depth of the monument. Is it down a foot? Is it down a tenth? Is it flush? This is the inconsistencies that create problems for the next surveyor. Because if you go out and you find a boat spike with an aluminum washer and it doesn't fit the measurements shown on this particular record, well, is that the same spike and washer? Did they make an error or is it a different spike and washer? You really have no way of knowing. And that's why these descriptions are insufficient. Now, if your field crew goes out and they bring back field notes that look like this, it's certainly not acceptable. I can tell you if I went into a, a Starbucks and I told a barista that I was going to pay you 20, 30, 40, $50 an hour to write three complete sentences, I would have a line out the door of people willing to do that. If you're paying a field person to write SPK and that's all you get, you need to question what kind of operation you want to be presenting to the public and to the records. One of the lesser descriptions that is equally annoying is when they'll say found per R1. Well, if R1 says S and W, is that sufficient? Certainly not. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, when you look at the picture here on the left, what do you see? In red is a common description, found SPK. But technically, what is it we have? Well, what we're looking at here is we found a quote, mag spike, unquote, and that's because it's stamped in the top of the mag spike, with an aluminum washer stamped D period woolly, P period L period S period 7304 flush and asphalt. The abbreviated version is the second one. There's not a lot of room for abbreviation. Why would you abbreviate? There is no premium on letters. This would be an example of a proper description of a monument found in the field. In the event that this, mon this washer became illegible and you found something stamped mag nail and the washer was illegible or partially illegible, you would have a pedigree and you would have a, a very reasonable certainty that that is the same monument that you no longer can see. Okay, so we have this history of very poor descriptions uh, in, our, in our records. We have S and W, we have SPK. Well, how, do, how does the surveyor go about amending these? Well, what you do is you supplement the description that you have with the information that is missing. For example, looking at this particular slide, you'll see that the underlying record said, likely said, set spike and washer stamped LS7432, and that's per a corner record. So what you see here is a supplementing. It's a gear spike, parenthesis, because that's not actually on the original record. It's a brass washer. And then after the description, because they didn't give a depth, it says down three hundredths in asphalt paving. That's how we would supplement a description. If we go down to monument seven, and you see here we found spike and washer, and it's supplemented with boat spike and brass washer. And this is how we update the poor descriptions in the public record with new descriptions of monuments or better descriptions. Another common thing is we have in lieu of or accepted as. Now when you're describing a monument in lieu of, that technically if you look in Black's Law Dictionary, it says instead of. So it doesn't make sense that you would find a two inch iron pipe in lieu of a two by two hub. 
They're actually not the same thing and it becomes unimportant. It's either a no reference pipe or it's a referenced pipe. It's not in lieu of. In lieu of is commonly used when you have the same tag but a different character of monument. For example, a map says set two inch iron pipe tell LS1234. The surveyor goes out and he finds a spike and washer LS1234. Well that's the same surveyor but when he went to set the pipe he found that it was asphalt and he didn't update the description on the record. That would be a classic example of in lieu of. The same is true with accepted as. You're not going to accept a 2x2 two two hub as a 2 inch iron pipe. It doesn't make sense. Accepted as is typically used to for location found two inch iron pipe accepted as the northwest corner of lot one. Any other use of this is generally incorrect. A negligence is defined as the failure to meet the standard of care. The standard of care is generally the first uh, indication is state law. Second is accepted guidelines written practice issues, particularly if they've been peer reviewed and public commented, such as the guide by the county surveyors. So ask yourself, are you meeting the written standard when your field crew says FD, SPK, found MON, found per R1? Certainly not. Therefore, you have exposure. And let's just say that you want to do a good job as a land surveyor and you wanted to update the records so that the pedigree of these monuments is protected. That's sort of our job. So the fact that everybody does it that way in your jurisdiction certainly doesn't make it acceptable. I'm challenging each and every land surveyor in the state of California to do the best job they can in describing these monuments. If you're not getting good monument descriptions, you cannot properly perform as a land surveyor. These descriptions are important. If your field crew will not write down two or three descriptive sentences of a monument, I would wonder if you have the best staff available. I don't know that there's a room for these people in your organization if they refuse. I'll give you an example. I recently had a, another surveyor tell me that his field party chief told him he was not a metallurgist, which means he couldn't tell if it was aluminum or brass. Well, not a metallurgist, but you're not a surveyor either. Now, as a community, it's time for us to put away our clown shoes, pack away the mini bikes, and help our professional acumen.